I must uh, thank uh, Dinesh Abrol for giving me this uh, truly extraordinary opportunity because I don't think I uh, am sort of qualified to talk uh, on innovations and that on grassroots innovations. But then I was wondering that uh, having been working on uh, clusters, uh, industrial clusters which have become very fashionable these days, seem to be uh, the panacea for much of uh, development that we might be looking forward to. And uh, as you all know, uh, with the INUDO, uh, sometime in late 1990s, 1997 to be precise, uh, came up with this uh, idea. And then by that time, uh, we, we knew that from IDS, Sussex, a large number of uh, colleagues, uh, they were working on this. And uh, so it looked, uh, especially in the context of the developing countries, and uh, large countries like India, which are large number of clusters, uh, it appeared that uh, there's a lot of hope uh, to mediate a certain kinds of development uh, initiatives through promoting uh, clusters. Uh, but then, uh, as you know, that uh, a large number of uh, ideas uh, in terms of interventions, including the triple C approach, which was very much popularized uh, during the mid 90s, I should say, uh, Maybe they missed out on uh, the, the functional dynamics uh, of uh, clusters as they live uh, and die uh, often uh, in, in, in rural areas. Uh, so what I'll be presenting quickly uh, is uh, based on some of the field work that we have been doing as part of a larger study on inclusive innovations and development. Uh, I'll just uh, probably raise a few questions uh, with reference to uh, rural clusters and uh, whether uh, and, and what sort of uh, what are the driving forces for these clusters to innovate uh, because we, we think that innovations must be there, but then there has to be a reason for which uh, uh, the, the, the small entrepreneurs uh, should and must innovate. Uh, so I think that's where the whole question of livelihood comes in. It's not because you think they should innovate. Uh, they have a market, market to cater to and uh, there are other constraints. Uh, so it is in this broad uh, sense that uh, uh, I'll be presenting this and um, then I'll also be, be, uh, just to inform you that so maybe, I mean, we have no uh, reliable data on the number of clusters, forget about how many entrepreneurs and other variables in that, uh, but some estimates uh, put it as something like 6,400 clusters in India may be making it the uh, the place for uh, the largest number of clusters in the world, uh, of which uh, 6,000 uh, are handlooms and handicraft based. Uh, so making uh, it all the more important that when you're talking of cluster development or talking of innovations in clusters, uh, you must focus on the rural or the artisanal or the small town uh, clusters. So what, what are the major issues, as I said, as Professor Anil Gupta mentioned the first day? Uh, that it's a method, material, applications, something new in all or one or two of them. Uh, but then uh, we have to see that uh, it is not just enough to say that they're, they're pro pure, uh, but there are other uh, uh, innovations which also must be in place, whether they're technological, organizational, market related, or institutional. And so we do not know whether, uh, uh, we are just wondering whether. whether or the, the, the very weak market institutions and infrastructure, they have been uh, acting together or individually uh, as this incentive to innovate uh, by the, the rural artisan clusters, uh, or uh, it's something to do with their livelihood uh, options, or one of the, or rather a partial livelihood option, and uh, that governs uh, whether and how they would innovate. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a pathetic database, this database, uh, which you have official or I mean, coming from uh, some of the agencies uh, are absolutely faulty uh, because based on wrong ways of conceptualizing what a cluster is. And so, um, so I think so starting from there, uh, we, we have no uh, news about uh, how many have died or what kind of sickness uh, they suffer from. I'm talking of the rural artisan clusters mainly. And what kind of policies we have, I mean, simply followed uh, the so-called unit of cluster development policy, which has informed, unfortunately, uh, almost entire uh, cluster development 
policies uh, or whatever approaches. There is no cluster one policy as such. Uh, initiatives, whether by individual states or by ministries. And uh, I don't think uh, that uh, innovations are going to come up the way we imagine in these clusters because of a very, very huge proportion of uh, these firms uh, in the clusters are in the so-called informal sector. So uh, uh, by, by definition, they have been already excluded and uh, there have been issues of uh, labor, there have been issues of price competition and working concerns, uh, not to talk about that. Uh, so I take you to two clusters which we, we surveyed. In fact, we covered all the units. Uh, one is in, uh, in Puri uh, district, in, in, in very quite well-known applique cluster, very old. Um, and uh, so just to, I mean, this is like large number of Indian rural clusters or artisan clusters, which have typically a long history uh, linked to the culture or whatever. And, uh, but then uh, these are also um, sort of clusters which have emerged uh, sort of made uh, more or less, they have actually innovated uh, in their own uh, small ways. And these are the kind of products uh, uh, which uh, you see, so they have sort of moved from very traditional uh, items like this uh, to modern items. But then um, this also, if you look into their organization of production, uh, so this is very much uh, decentralized. Uh, the cluster is essentially uh, a large part of the tasks of include, which makes for these products they are done in the households in far of villages, uh, something like more than 400 uh, villages spread over this uh, district. Uh, there are households where uh, these things are done to job workers. And uh, so that's how uh, the, the organization of production also gives us an idea as to what kind of uh, institutional innovation is uh, required. And then comes uh, the issue of uh, marketing, uh, which I think is the essence of all business, whether they're small, big, rural, artisan, uh, a, a business is always uh, for a market which either exists or a potential one, um, but then there has to be channels. Uh, so with all our talks about uh, supporting uh, innovation, supporting uh, rural clusters, uh, ultimately, uh, is are the personal contacts and through travel uh, and transport agents um, uh, these uh, the, the small uh, enterprises, uh, they have been uh, selling their product all over the world, by the way, uh, sending their um, goods through um, the, the international courier service and uh, also using inter internet uh, extensively, uh, but not uh, really uh, getting any support from the state um, uh, in terms of uh, their marketing. Uh, so this is how, uh, so, so why I'm showing this is to just let you know that how uh, poorly organized, uh, how poorly supported uh, these kind of enterprises are. And I think that in, in itself poses a lot of challenge to what kind of innovation uh, that we might be talking about. I take you to another cluster in a village called Molela in uh, Rajasthan, in Rajasaman district, not very far from Udaipur. Uh, it's a very uh, well-known cluster in the sense that uh, you go to the internet and uh, you, you find a large reference to this. They have got the GI uh, recently. Uh, this, uh, so this is what a typical uh, enterprise uh, looks like. The, the main raw material is uh, clay, uh, which is available from a nearby area. And those are the tools, if you can notice them, the small little things. These are the tools, some of the tools they use. So it's a purely manual uh, form of work. And this is the innovation, um, like process, if you like, uh, use of some kind of a, uh, um, motors to knead uh, the mud, uh, the clay, and to make it a little faster. So these are the units that I'm showing you. And uh, so these are the products, uh, semi-processed. Uh, these are the farmers. So these are originally uh, meant for, uh, like, uh, to, be, to be used by individual tribal uh, families for certain uh, rituals, uh, but then over time, uh, they have also made changes, innovated, or they have uh, made uh, product diversification, and very little, again, change in the processes uh, to come in for uh, newer products, which may, may have higher uh, values. Uh, and uh, so this is the kind of products that we are talking about, quite heavy, uh, made of mud, and uh, very, very 
much based on manual uh, skills. So this is the next innovation that they could do that to be uh, having a little uh, value addition. Uh, some of them thought we originally it was, it was supposed to be only pure uh, Ardham products, uh, but then they thought why not to add a little color and might make a little more money. Uh, this is one of the artisan sons who is doing MBA in Ahmedabad, but belongs to the, one of the families in this. So he comes during his holidays and he thinks that because uh, he is uh, more educated, uh, so he, he thinks he can uh, innovate and he's using certain special paints and claims that his products uh, uh, get a little extra money. So this is his job during the holidays. And here comes the state and its innovation. Uh, on its role in innovation, it, uh, it has given them a certificate of uh, geographical uh, indication. And uh, no one knows when we inquired about this uh, with the entrepreneurs that, what do you think about this? I mean, do you think the state has done a great service to you? So they wondered, they, they only remembered that some people came from Chennai and put us in a workshop. Incidentally, we found the workshop invitation in one uh, poor farm, in one uh, poor entrepreneur's uh, dustbin, and uh, so that's where, so nothing has uh, happened after that. And this is the market uh, for these products, on the roadside uh, near Nathadwara Temple, and uh, as you can see, they're very, very uh, lowly paid, mm, and these are brittle, difficult to transport, no one to buy, and they just sort of stand on the roadside, and at times to be picked up by individuals. So these are the, and this, I'm showing this also, there is a big raw material crisis, because this is the valley from where, near the Haldigat Valley, from where they get this mud. And, um, but then brick lins have come up, uh, so there is a crisis in uh, the sustainability of this kind of a, uh, of a GI uh, certified uh, cluster. Um, so what do we uh, think about this? Uh, um, I, I call it subsistence industrialization. Um, um, and uh, I think that in itself, is probably anti-innovation. Uh, um, not to talk about uh, the absence of uh, institutional innovation in tackling these clusters, the real, uh, the people who are ready to innovate, ready to market, uh, but then uh, they have nowhere to go and a certain kind of products they're handling. Uh, so the state uh, needs to create infrastructure. The same old stories, actually I happened to find a report way back in 1948 a team uh, from the industry department sent to Japan uh, to look into how the rural industrial sector could be uh, made more, uh, um, the technological dynamism can be uh, uh, imparted to rural uh, industries. And I think the same issues remain. The infrastructure remains a big issue, not to talk about power, electricity, to the enterprises in the rural sector. I call it empowering enterprises and, uh, and markets. Uh, we are still looking for in the, in, in the larger, not just linking local to the global, but I think there's a big uh, uh, rethink needed to explore larger domestic markets, regional markets, uh, which might help in networking and learning and also give uh, the innovation uh, an, an edge in earning a partial livelihood to the uh, entrepreneurs. Thank you very much.